You're watching Tick Tech No, Technology Integration Coach Tech Tips to Know. Hi, my name is Chris Pugh. I'm a technology coach for Clarksville Montgomery County School System. And we're going to take a look at how to get your 3D printer back and running if you happen to have one of the 3D Systems Cube printers. Uh, it uses this proprietary cartridge that tends to jam and the uh, filament tends to break. So we're looking at how to fix that to get you back on your feet again. Unlike most 3D printers, this one has a spool that goes inside and has the extruder, which is normally in the printer, as part of the spool and the nozzle, which also is usually in the printer, as part of the spool. So uh, that tends to be part of the reason why these break so easy because you're putting a lot more stress in places it's not supposed to be. All right, so a trick I've seen in other videos, and thankfully people are nice enough to share that, is that you can advance this uh, with the screwdriver by just shoving it in there and, and twisting counterclockwise. It may also may be necessary to open up the case, and when you do, an easy tool for that is a uh, putty knife or a paint spatula, whatever you call it, that you just kind of kind of pry around the edge and uh, twist to crack it open with uh, by pushing the little clips on the inside. Uh, you have to work your way all the way around it to get the whole thing open, but with a little patience, you'll be able to get it just fine. All right, there's two techniques to get this inside ring to let go. One involves grabbing a, a pair of sharp scissors. Uh, opening it up a little bit and then there's two holes at the top and at the bottom to kind of wedge it in and kind of push against to release uh, the pin. If that's not any, it's not going to work for you, then uh, the other one is just to kind of pull a little harder on the around the outside again and that seems to work every time. Just you know, be careful. Again, work your way around and it'll pop free eventually just like that. Alright, so it has lots of breaks in the line, like right there. You can see a clear break. When the extruder pulls through, no more is going to come out. So, uh, when I actually took this apart, there were about six or seven different chunks and pieces throughout the system that had to be pulled out. Uh, and to do that, you got to use the uh, some metric, metric, not standard, metric Allen wrenches, um, sizes 2.5 and 2.0 to be able to get the two different size screw heads out to remove the extruder and pull it apart to really get this thing uh, cleared out. It's also best to lay this flat on the table because you're going to need to put a fair amount of force down into the, the screw heads to be able to break them free without stripping them out. Alright, so there are two screws with the smallest, the 2.0 that hold the extruder and the filament tube to the outside case. Uh, get those out, put them someplace safe, you don't want to lose them. And then there are two more that hold it together, hold the two halves of the extruder together, and those have the kind of larger 2.5 uh, screw heads. And they're right there. Alright, once you've got that apart, there are two little wheels. One has gear teeth on it, and that it advances the uh, filament through and the other is a round pulley to kind of kind of help mash it and apply pressure. Alright, so we've got one end free. Uh, there's a broken bit. Now we have to get the other end free. We've got to take the nozzle off and thankfully that's pretty easy to do. We'll just need our handy dandy paint scraper putty knife and uh, there's two little pegs on the top and the bottom and the front. It is shove in there and if you press gently enough on the separation between the top half and the bottom half right near the back edge of the nozzle it will kind of gonna wedge it in and, and pop it free. Alright so once you've got this apart you want to make note of what's going on inside of there. There's uh, the nozzle head with a kind of a flange uh, kind of a, a built-in washer and behind that is a spring that is compressed and they fit into kind of a semicircular channel when you're putting it back together, you're going to have to compress that spring and fit both of those in there. The spring goes on first. So I'm going to lift this out of here carefully. Uh, notice the spring popped out. You're going to hold on to that one and then you're going to gently twist and pull to get this uh, nozzle head out. 
and sometimes you come out with, oh, there it is, another piece of broken filament. And this one's particularly painful. Uh, it's not wanting to do very well. Uh, I had to eventually just get a pair of pliers and grab the back end of that and kind of twist and pull, being careful not to break the, the nozzle itself. All right, so now the part of clearing things out. So I'm going to use a good unbroken filament from the spool to kind of clear out first the tube that leads into the extruder. And once I've got that fed through there, I'm going to use that to kind of gently push on the uh, back side of the tube where the extruder normally sits and try and push on that. And sometimes I have to kind of go around and flip to the other end, pieces of break off. Uh, if it's stuck really good, I may need something else like the uh, the tiniest um, Allen wrench, the 1.5 Allen wrench, to kind of push and uh, and break it free, like that. Just because it needs something a little, a little stiffer and but small enough to go in without gouging the sides of the uh, tube. Okay, this is going to take a little while, so just be patient. Uh, it will work its way out. Uh, take a look, make sure you're not jamming a broken piece over top of another piece, then you got to kind of squeeze it down to get it uh, to finish coming all the way out, but it, it will come out, just be patient. Alright, so once you're done clearing everything out and have a nice good filament coming from the, the feeding tube going into, that goes into the extruder and uh, through the, the tube that comes out of the extruder, you're going to want to put things back together and what you saw just there is there's a little metal collar that fits down into the base of that. Uh, you're going to put the spring on and then kind of gently push and twist the nozzle back on. Then you have to do the really tricky part of squeezing the spring up against that little back part of the metal collar enough that it fits down into that little uh, piece you just see me pointing to right there, that little kind of semicircular cavity uh, that's on both halves of the uh, casing for the nozzle. All right, so once you've got the spring and the nozzle back in, the other part of the casing has four plastic pegs that fit into four holes in the front end. Just uh, line it up, again, trying to get that spring and metal flange to go back in there, and then squeeze it together. I also sometimes have to uh, lay it face front on the table and then push down for it to finish snapping in place, but it will snap back together. Alright, so the next part is to put the extruder back together, and I just like to start with the part that has the uh, the, the gear pulley, the gear and pulley. Uh, there's a little metal collar that makes sure you only put it in one way. So just put the little metal collar in the space made for it. Kind of roll the gear back and forth until you kind of work the filament down in there, and then you can put the top part of the cover on it. Use the large headed hex screws to assemble the two halves of the extruder. Alright, don't make this mistake. I got excited and put the extruder back on before I put the spool in. The spool goes in the bottom. So make sure you put the spool in the bottom so that the uh, filament is coming off in a clockwise direction. And then you can get all happy and put the extruder back in. Otherwise, you've got to spend time taking it back apart, which is just, you know, frustrating. All right, so once it's back around, it's time to put the smaller of the 2.0 uh, hex head screws back in. All right, so there's a little plastic tube that needs to go and be tucked back down inside the case. Uh, when you put this back on, there is kind of a, a holder that has a little slot at, at the back side of it that fits over two uh, little kind of teeth right there and that holds it in place so that when you snap the cover back on and there's again two more teeth on the bottom of the case top you can snap it all the way back around sometimes the piece falls out uh, no worries it just pops back in but you do have to be mindful of how it goes back in because there's kind of a, a two prongs on one end one prong on the other like a, like a battery cover uh, and then like a piece that helps shove the uh, filament to the left. All right, and you're done. Again, it took about 20, 25 minutes to get this fixed, but it's well worth your time given that these things cost about 50 bucks a piece. Hope this helps.